Welcome to the heat pump series. There's gonna be a whole series of videos here, but before we get started, it's important you've taken the fundamental series. You already understand the refrigeration cycle, you understand all of the components, and very importantly, saturation, superheat, and subcooling. You have those down pat before we get into the heat pump series. We're gonna revisit some of those same concepts, but understanding that before we get here is gonna be very, very important. And we're just gonna do a quick review, and then I'm gonna start making some spins on it. And through these series, of videos you'll have a really good understanding what's happening with the heat pump and just like with air conditioning we're going to have our compressor it's going to pull in a low temperature low pressure superheated vapor and it's going to compress it and pump out a high temperature high pressure superheated vapor that's going to go into our condensing cool to the very top little section that de-superheats it that's rejecting heat it's going to de-superheat it then we're going to change it from a vapor to a liquid through most of this condensing coil that's the magic the saturation latent heat taking place then we're going to subcool it that last little bit of this condensing coil we subcool that liquid below saturation we send that subcooled liquid into our metering device our metering device drops the pressure and by dropping the pressure we drop the boiling point we drop the temperature of the refrigerant and evaporator the refrigerant is now boiling inside the evaporator it's boiling it's absorbing heat once we boil it all from a liquid to a vapor through most of the evaporator coil the last little bit we superheat that refrigerant then we have that low temperature low pressure your superheated refrigerant coming back to our compressor and our cycle starts again. Our compressor's job is to compress that refrigerant. By compressing it, it raises the pressure, but more importantly, raises the temperature. We need to compress it to raise the temperature above the temperature of the air. So even if it's 100 degrees outside, we can compress that refrigerant to where it's 120 degrees. Now the refrigerant's warmer than the air. We put a fan on it. The heat wants to leave the warm refrigerant and go to the cooler 100 degree air. So even though it's hot outside, we're still able to move heat to an even warmer place because thermodynamics. It's leaving the warm refrigerant going to the cooler air. And inside, it's the opposite, but very similar we're having a metering device that's dropping the temperature, dropping the boiling point. So as that refrigerant comes to that metering device, it drops in temperature, drops in pressure. Even though it's cooler inside the house, we're still dropping the temperature and dropping the pressure below what the air temperature is. So if it's 75 degrees in the house, our refrigerant stays boiling, changing state at 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And because it's changing state at 40 degrees, that's cooler than 75, we move that 75 degree air across the that refrigerant, the refrigerant boils and absorbs heat out of that air and the air leaves cooler. So we're able to take the heat out of the air and because we can boil the refrigerant at a lower temperature, we're still able to absorb heat. So we're absorbing heat from inside the house. We're collecting it into that refrigerant. Then we compress that refrigerant to a higher temperature, higher pressure and reject the heat outside. And we just keep that socket going on and on, absorbing heat inside, rejecting heat outside. Now that's our typical system. We've talked about a hundred thousand times, but what would happen if I took this inside unit and I stuck this outside the house? So this is outside now. And I put this unit right inside the living room and I ran that system. What would be happening? Well, if you think about it, it's the same exact refrigeration cycle. We're gonna be absorbing heat from outside and we're gonna be bringing that heat inside. Even though it's warmer in the house and it's cooler outside, we're collecting heat from outside. We're squeezing that refrigerant. We're squeezing it to be a higher temperature than the air temperature, moving a fan across it. And then we can simply reject that heat inside the house. And then we send our refrigerant back outside. We have a metering device that drops the temperature, drops the pressure. Even though the temperature of the air outside drops, we drop the temperature of the refrigerant even lower and we're able to absorb heat from the air outside into the refrigerant. We squeeze, we compress that refrigerant, we make it condense, we reject heat inside the house. So a heat pump is simply just an air conditioner except we just swap the components. So if this was outside your house and this was inside your house, it would essentially be a heat pump. Now there's some issues with that. One is this isn't gonna distribute air very well. It's gonna be noisy and take up a lot of space. Outside, this isn't made to handle the weather very well. Uh, it's gonna be an issue. So we're gonna modify our typical system we already have to make it where it's more versatile. So we can keep this section outside and we can keep this section inside. But as long as you understand that we're absorbing heat from outside the house, bringing it inside the house, 
That is what's the key. That's what's most important. Now, a lot of times people get concerned, well, how are we absorbing heat outside if there's no heat? We have gotta go back to our very fundamentals, back at the very first part of the fundamental series. There's gonna be heat outside all the way down to absolute zero, which is zero degrees Kelvin, zero degrees Rankin, minus 273 degrees Celsius, and minus 460 degrees Fahrenheit. That is a massively low temperature. So absolute zero, all heat, all movement, all energy stops at that point. So anything above that's considered heat. So at minus 459 degrees Fahrenheit, there's one degree of heat energy outside. So even if it's zero degrees Fahrenheit outside of your house, zero degrees Fahrenheit, there is 460 degrees Fahrenheit of heat still available. So it's important for us to understand that as the temperature outside starts to drop, there's still lots of heat available. It just takes a little bit more work harvesting and collecting that heat, but it's absolutely doable. Let's look at this from a little different angle.